Welcome to the Patterns in Nature Challenge BlocksCAD tutorial. In this video, we'll be going over how to 3D design a snowflake using BlocksCAD, a scratch-based coding 3D design tool. Go ahead and start with a blank BlocksCAD canvas, and we'll begin by renaming our project. This one will be called Symmetrical Snowflake. We're going to start by creating our arms, so click on 3D Shapes and then grab a cube. Click and drag the cube out into the center of the canvas. If you're new to BlocksCAD, clicking on Render will create any of the 3D objects that we've got built using our code on the left hand side. Here we can see the cube that we've just dropped into our workspace. I'm going to start by modifying the size of our cube. First, I'll set our X to 5, then set the Y to 50, and finally set the Z to 5. For each of the objects I'm working with, I'm going to select Centered to make sure they start at the origin of my plane. Clicking Render once again will allow me to see the changes that I've made. The rectangular prism that we've created will serve as the stem of the arms of our snowflake. Next, I'm going to want to move our rectangle. To do so, I'll click on Transforms, then add a Translate block to the cube that we already have in our workspace. As I've made my stem 50 millimeters long, I'm going to move the stem itself 25 millimeters in the same direction. By clicking render, we can see the change that was made from the translate. The next piece that I will add will be another cube. This will be adding to our pattern that will later on be copied six times. I'll start by altering the size of the cube to 20 millimeters X, 20 millimeters Y, and 5 millimeters Z. Clicking on render will show up our new cube. And now we're going to add some transforms to it. We're going to start by adding a rotate to the cube. Next, we'll also add a translate on top of our rotate. The use of multiple transforms in this example will allow us to manipulate our object and place it where we want it on our arm. If we look at our build plate, we can see that we want to rotate this new cube around the z-axis. I'll go ahead and change that now using the small dial to 45 degrees. I'll click again on render to see the change that I've made with my rotation. Next, I'm going to move this cube out to the end of the stem of our snowflake. As the stem itself is 50 millimeters long, I'm going to translate our new cube 45 millimeters along the y-axis. At this point, I'm going to need another object to remove from that cube the area that I do not want to appear. I'll grab another cube from our 3D shapes and again add the rotate and translate transforms to the object. I'm moving quickly here, but I rotate it 45 degrees. And next, I'm going to make it slightly smaller than the cube I just created. This one will be 15 by 15 by 5. Don't forget to center your objects. I like the size of this new cube, 
but I need to move it out next to the other one. So I'll go ahead and grab a translate from our transform menu and add it to our newest cube. At this time, I'm actually going to move our previous cube in a little bit from 45 to 40 millimeters and our new cube out to 45 millimeters all along the y-axis. As soon as I click render, you can see where the two will sit. In order to remove our new cube from our first cube, we're going to use set ops and then use the difference block. The larger of the two squares will be placed in the top of the difference block with the smaller one placed in the minus section. What we're doing here is removing the smaller square from the larger square. When I click render, you can see the shape that's been created by subtracting one from the other. What we have now is the basis of our first arm. We're going to want to be able to duplicate this arm and recreate it at multiple different angles. To start this process, I'm going to add another rotate block to this entire section of blocks. I'm also going to add a rotate block to our original stem. Both of these objects are going to be rotated at varying angles for each arm. In order to create multiples, I'm going to use a loop. Start by adding a loop to the right block. By default, a loop goes from 1 to 10. Since there are 6 arms on this snowflake, I'll change our 10 to 6. With our loop created, we can utilize a variable. Within this loop, it's i, and it'll allow us to set 6 different angles for 6 different arms. Go ahead and grab that i variable from the variables menu. Next, from the math menu, grab the equation block and drop it within our rotate just inside the loop. We're going to use this to multiply i and create six different arms. With six arms at a total of 360 degrees, each arm will be rotated by 60 degrees, which I'll put into our rotate tool now. As soon as I press render, I can see the five additional parts of our snowflake arms that have been created using the loop. We want the stem of our arms to be replicated as well, so I'm going to create another loop, and this time place it around the stem that I've already got created. Again, I'm going to use the equation block from the math menu, and this time I'm going to add our newest variable, which is j, before placing the equation within the rotation of our first stem. Change the equation to multiplication and the rotation angle to 60 degrees, before altering the loop to also run from 1 to 6. We can now see the frame of our snowflake. I'd like to add a little bit more to this snowflake, and in order to do so, I'm going to copy the pieces that we used to create the ends of each arm. First, I'll remove it from the block that it's currently in before right-clicking on the difference block and duplicating it. I'll then place that block back where it was before moving the new one down so that I can manipulate it. We'll need to add a rotation to this new block as well as add a new loop in order to duplicate it. We'll add another equation block from our math menu before adding the newest variable of this loop, which is k. Change the equation to multiplication and again the angle to 60 degrees. We also want our new loop to only run to 6. When I click render, I don't see any difference because these parts are in the same location as the old parts. We'll alter the translation of our new cubes in order to have them closer to the body of the snowflake. I'll place our lower cube at 25 millimeters Y and our upper cube at 20 millimeters Y, both in translation. When I press render, I see our newest addition to the snowflake.
As a final touch for this snowflake that we've created, we're going to change the color of the object. This can be found under the Transforms menu. First, I organize my three blocks before grabbing a new color transform. When I press the plus button, I'm able to add new slots for each of my blocks to fall into. I'm going to select a nice blue. When I press render, I'll see our new color on the snowflake. This tutorial covered just one basic snowflake, but using the loops that we covered in today's video, as well as different shapes, you can create many different types of snowflakes. To submit my object to the Patterns in Nature competition, I'm going to use the drop-down menu under the model to select Polar Cloud before sending the object over to the Polar Cloud and uploading it. From here, I'll use the Edit button in order to change my title and add Pattern Challenge so that my object can be found. I'll add a brief description to my object. If I scroll to the bottom of the Edit Object page, I can add an additional photo. I've gone ahead and rendered this object in another software in order to make it look just like a snowflake in blue glass. Now, when people want to print this object, they have an idea of what it looks like. When I'm ready to share, I'll click Done before pressing Share and clicking Share with Everyone. My snowflake will now be found in Community Objects. Thanks for watching our tutorial, and good luck with the Patterns in Nature Challenge. We look forward to seeing your submissions.